It's Monday, April the 18th, and you're tuned in to the TNIAB Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the world. And if we didn't talk about it here, it means it just wasn't cool. This week, we have uh, really nothing planned mm-hmm. going on. We had something minor we were going to talk about, but... Uh, plans fell through. Yeah, you barely got through it, and I, I didn't even touch it. <laughs> We'll talk about it next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. If you guys are wondering, it was going to be Bravely Second. Mm. But the game... Because Nintendo puts their games on Friday. Yeah, they're like, hey man, F Tuesdays. Yeah, and then everybody has plans on Saturdays, and it's like, well, I couldn't play games. Well, I could have played games, but it would have been very rude. It, see? <laughs> and then Sunday comes along, and that's podcast day, and it's like, well... We gotta watch, we gotta watch that anime. Yes, because uh, if you guys... Haven't already heard, we have decided our anime picks for the Anime Club, which will be a separate show shortly released after this one. Mm-hmm. But speaking of pick, let's go into our picks this week. I will kick it off, and I have a whole host of new movie, specifically superhero and anime movie news. Tell me all about it. So these are going to be really quick, short fire. First one, uh, Batman vs. Superman, mixed reviews all around. Anthony loved movie. it. It's I thought movie. it was cool. Uh Anyways, but the, if, but for all the arguments, there is one thing we can everyone can agree on. Mm-hmm. That was Ben Affleck was the best part of that movie. He's a good Batman. He's a very good Batman. Now, much so, almost everybody's surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, Affleck. DC has stated there was going to be a, a Batman solo movie before, but we just didn't know who was going to spearhead it or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've actually confirmed that not only is there going to be a Batman solo movie, but Ben Affleck is going to write and direct it. Dang. Which is means a lot considering the last movie he did that with won uh, Oscar, mm-hmm. right? Was it Gone Girl? No, 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 no. Argo. Argo. Okay. Right. I haven't seen. Did it. he do Gone Girl? I, I, I know, know he's. The did lead. he direct Gone Girl? I'm not sure. I couldn't remember, but I know Argo was the the big one he did last okay, time. I haven't seen Argo. I've seen Gone Girl. Yeah, Argo's that type of movie where I got I really got to be in the mood to watch that uh, shit. Okay. Like, you know what it's about? No. Where um I I. Pretty sure it's um, a bunch of news journalists go to like the Middle East. Oh, but it's really like an um, undercover thing because they have to rescue people. Oh, is that the thing where Canada got really outraged because they didn't give Canada credit for all the work yes, they did? Yes, yes, yes. That? Okay. That's the one. Yeah. The the I don't know how the movie plays on that though, yeah. so we'll see. But yeah, Batfleck. I mean, Ben Affleck. Same thing. Directing and writing a. Batman movie can only mean great things. Might even be better than those Nolan flicks. Who knows? Maybe. Who Did, knows? So, sidetrack. Did you see, uh, was it Late Night with... Not, okay, oh, maybe. Sad Affleck? No, not Sad Affleck. Uh, what's his face? Not Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel. Where uh, he was at the party in the movie. And he's like, hey! Yeah, you're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just saw that this yeah. weekend. It was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty good. <laughs> Oh my god, no, he is Superman. <laughs> How could I have been so blind? <laughs> Look, you just take off the glasses. It's Superman. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, next up in the Marvel side of things. So we know that a Spider-Man movie was coming out. This time it's official. Or mm-hmm. it, uh, Marvel is producing it. So he's paying for it. Yes. I believe that's how the deal went. Uh, and I believe Sony gets all the credit. Probably. Because whatever (laughs) because they own the movie (laughs) spider-man uh anyways the title of the movie has been announced called spider-man homecoming Mm -hmm. sounds like well we know this is a young spidey in high school so it sounds like prom origin story no it's not gonna be an origin story okay but it sounds like it's only getting a center around high school that's all we got wait did they announce who spider-man was already tom holland i don't know who that is He's some British dude. Okay, that's okay. That makes sense. All actors now are some British dudes. Yeah, I think he's like nineteen or eighteen. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, seeing as I love Spider Man, I'm very anxious to see this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see the meme going around, or not the meme, but just the trend going around of uh, Aunt May is getting younger and younger? No, <laughs> no, I haven't. Because you know, in the first one, Tobey Maguire is that old lady. Yeah, she's an old lady. She's an aunt. And then, um, in in the Andrew Garfield ones, it was... Oh, I forget her name, but she was considerably younger. She still felt like an aunt, she, like an aunt. She totally felt... Yeah, she felt younger. But I mean, but you know how, like, in the comics in the show, 
She so, was super old. She's like an old lady. Yeah. Well, in this one, in Spider-Man Homecoming, she looks young. 26. <laughs> I mean, no. So it's played by, she's played by Marissa Tomei. Okay. Um, you know who Marissa Tomei is? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So I was like, Marissa Tomei, yeah, she looks young. I looked up her age. I didn't realize she was like in her early 50s. Still, she looks young. That's the yeah. point. So I'm like, wow. But young Spidey, I guess you need a young Aunt May. Yeah. So it works out. But yeah, Marissa Tomei. That's cool. Um, that's that. And then on the final bit of Marvel side, the Doctor Strange trailer was released. Yeah, and we watched it. We just watched it. What do you think? I thought it was cool. They're going full on supernatural weirdness with this movie. Mm -hmm. Like they really emphasize on the strange part of that mm -hmm. title mm -hmm. and less so on the Doctor. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, I got a sort of Inception vibe. Yeah, so when like the city split into cubes and stuff, and, yeah. Like, when he when he like waves his hand, that one guy waves his hands, and like yeah. everything starts going all kaleidoscope. Yeah, and that a part of me kept, just couldn't help but feel like, man, I know I said it when Doctor Strange was announced, but like, what if it really was Leo? Oh, if it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what would that movie look like? I don't know, man. It'd have a lot of face acting. I think I'll, I think off the I think that that would be my favorite Marvel movie if it was Leonardo DiCaprio as Doctor Strange. Dang. Yeah, I hope Leo gets one of the Marvel roles. <laughs> what though? I don't. Who would he play? The Hulk. Nah, nah. It has to be something new. Someone that's not uh, in the universe. Cable. No, it's too <laughs> serious. <laughs> oh man, if Leo was Doctor Doom, that would be pretty cool. That'd be okay. I'd be down with that. Ah, uh, but then you wouldn't see his face. That's the best part. And I feel like that's the best part of Leo. That's why you get Leo. Yeah, true. Or you don't put a mask on him. It's pretty dreamy. Uh-huh. But yeah, no, Doctor Strange looks cool. It ends off with him in the cape. Leonardo DiCaprio's Black Panther. <laughs> no, that guy's already been cast. No, it's a trick. It's fake casts. Wow. Wow. Takes off the mask. It's Leo. Yeah. Um. Anything else you want to say on that? No, like, this movie reminds me a lot of, uh, there was like an animated origin story I watched. It was like a... Uh, For Doctor Strange? For Doctor Strange. It was like a it was like a Marvel animated, but it was like half of it was Doctor Strange and half of it was someone else. Okay. And like it reminds me a lot of that. Like every time I see it, I think of images from that uh from that origin animated mm, origin story I saw. I see. It seems like I've never read Doctor Strange comics, but for, based off that animated film, it seems super accurate. So like okay. they're just going straight comic book with this thing. Like they have with the other movies. Yeah. Which is again, it's cool. It is cool. I just, I still to this day cannot get over how, like, being comic book accurate is still, like, something they're doing instead of trying to, like, normalize yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and my final thing is also movie related. Is it a weeb movie? It's a total weeb movie. Some might say it's the weeb movie. Love Live! Live action! No, it's Ghost in the Shell. That's pretty weeb. Which is, yeah, Ghost in the Shell... It's getting a live action movie. And Scarlett Johansson, we've known this a long time ago, was cast as the lead as Motoko uh -huh. Kusanagi. But the first image got, of her got released. What? So, this image is loading on my computer, <laughs> I believe. And it's a pretty simple image to look at. It's, um, how can I put it? She's just looking into a window, I think? Okay. Or a piece of glass. And she's got short black hair with some violet highlights because everyone knows her hair is supposed to be purple or violet that in the That just anime. looks like Scarlett Johansson with black hair. Doesn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so the only reason I bring this up is because there's a lot of hate. A lot mm -hmm. of hate on this. Um, a lot of people are saying Hollywood's whitewashing the, the anime scene. There should have been some Asian chick. What's new? Devin Aoki. <laughs> so no not Devin Aoki no like, what came a lot from this especially in the circle of people I follow was that the girl from Pacific Rim should have been her oh what's her fate? what's her name I don't know I think that would have been a terrible choice I don't I don't think she really fits that role I also don't think she could act I don't know man did you see Pacific Rim <laughs> yes I saw this I was man. in the theater with you I mean I got just as excited but that this when my excitement our excitement does not equal quality when they were in the outer atmosphere and she pulled out that sword <sighs> Yes, but that, I mean, that was... Acting at its peak. Uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was something. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, what 
what Asian stars really fit. So yeah, that's a problem. Like it's not so much. I don't think it's the problem is that, it, you know, whitewashing or anything like these uh, types of roles. But there just are no Asian actors, any notable ones. I would say that like, I feel would fit this role. Yeah, and I don't even mean that female. I mean like. <laughs> like across the board i can't think of a male asian actor who is let's say as revered or, or not revered but as respected as say um i don't know like jack nicholson or something jackie chan no <laughs> no as much as we all love jackie and Jet Li and donnie Yen, we all know that they yeah. have a specific role they need to fill like yeah to be honest like when i think of like very legendary actors or actresses yeah. it's, it's like robert de niro it's al pacino yeah. like it is these white dudes, Meryl mm. Streep, like it's yeah. these white white people, mm. and that's also to do with like where I've grown up. But yeah, no, for sure. Uh, the one thing I will say is I think I think having Scarlett Johansson as the lead is a good thing, just because I think she can act. She has a uh, she can do action stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think what I th think is most important is a lot of people, a lot of mainstream people, will see movies just based on who is the lead actor or actress. I I saw Hunger Games based purely on... Jay yeah, Law, so. and I think that if this can bring a lot of people who don't watch anime into this movie, and then say the movie's good... Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, and then, like, more people get into it, I think that's great. When you can walk down the street and your Kill La Kill shirt yeah. is, like, totally recognizable to someone yeah. rando in the mall... Yeah. That's yeah. not a total weeb as well. Yeah, like, I think I think having her as on the forefront is good. Um, But just to, just to open it up a bit, uh, you look at the rest of the cast... Mm -hmm. it's super diverse is it actually okay. yeah they have some act they have uh some japanese actors okay from battle royale mm -hmm. um yeah so i know lately this like a lot of that uh that sort of out outrage maybe uh, backlash uh, -huh. uh through just like more diversity within act actors and actresses and stuff we oui. uh just comes mainly from lead roles like yeah they're not like no one's arguing that there isn't diversity within uh like the move like movies as a whole right uh but they're saying it's more like as lead roles usually it's yeah. whitewashed and yeah. like yeah like i can see that but also on the other hand like i can't really picture anyone else who would fit the role yeah i mean i'm not saying scarlett Johansson was the perfect pick but yeah i think it's a fine it's a fine choice it's okay mm -hmm. uh but those are all my big news items what are yours I got one. Oh, hot. I got one, and it's about speed running. Yeah. So you remember... That's uh, that thing where you put on your cross trainers and you go across the track? Yeah. Speed run. Mm. Uh, but this type of speed run is about video games. Oh, so Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, you gotta go fast, mm. right? It's kind of like that. Everything started from Sonic the Hedgehog. In the world, there was nothing. <laughs> and then Sonic the Hedgehog charged up his spin ball, yeah. and then the universe was created. Everyone's like, you can go fast? Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, story came out this week. Uh, there is a streamer or speedrunner by the name of Darbian, D-A-R-B-I-N. Darbian. Darbian. And he speed runs Super Mario Bros. Like the original NES Super Mario Bros. Oh. Uh, and Bro. this week he has gotten, uh, what people think is quote unquote the perfect speed run for Super Mario. How perfect uh, are we talking? We're talking, uh, people are saying that this record will go unbroken. Wow. Uh, because this feels to at least some people that this is the limit. Uh, this this run is the limit of human abilities before you get into computers who have like pixel perfect mm. uh, inputs. Mm. Uh, and like they just don't think this will be beaten. So he uh, originally beat, uh, held the world record for Super Mario Bros. at beating it at four minutes. 57 seconds and 427 milliseconds wow and even when that came in they're like ah oh, there's some time to improve uh but like it's of milliseconds mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he did and he beat it his the new world record the quote-unquote unbeatable mm -hmm. world record is at four minutes 57 seconds and 260 milliseconds so he shaved off two tenths yeah he shaved off me. two tenths of a second oh, okay and now, like, now everyone's just like, well, there's nothing else to do here. Go home. Wow. Uh, he, like, he just straight up said, like, after that, he's like, I'm done with this game. Like, that, yeah. this is the peak that I'm going to get. There's no, like, there's no room for him to improve, at least. Wow. 
Uh, and it's it's just nuts. You watch this guy play, and he has like a heart rate monitor too. It gets up to like which is weird. Yeah, it gets up to like one sixty. Is mm-hmm. kind of his heart kind of goes nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you watch this guy, and it's it's almost like he's he's a robot. Yeah, there's like there, I couldn't find anything that said that hey, this is a human being playing this game. It is no, he has perfected it to like almost machine quality. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. A lot of free time. Yeah, I guess. Well, if if he's streaming, like if he's getting enough stream hits, like that's revenue, man. That's that's like a part time job. True. It's true. That's crazy. I don't know. It's yeah, just, I don't. Th- I don't know if I'd have the mental ability to do it to speed run a game. To just sit there over and over. I feel like I could do a short game, like like a Super Mario. Like if I can get good at it, and like oh, I can beat it in under like seven minutes. Now let's keep oh, that's going. Too long. But uh, <laughs> seven minutes. That's too long. I could never do like people who speed run Majora's Mask. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, the world record for Majora's Mask is like an hour and 28 minutes. And you have to be on point for that whole time. And it's yeah. like, oh, I, I don't think I could do that. Yeah. It's too much. It's, it's a lot of dedication. And the way people are breaking these games are kind of insane. Mm-hmm. If you want a, a like, just recommendation for people, I think I might have talked about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a Super Mario 64 speed runner. Uh, he decided to try and beat all the levels in Super Mario Bro and Super Mario sixty four mm-hmm. with the least amount of A presses. Oh, so A is ju- the jump button. Yeah, uh, and he beat one of the levels. I think in TikTok Clock uh, or not? T- was it TikTok Clock or was it another? One? I think it was the underground sewer one. Okay. Uh, in half an A press. How do you half an A press? <laughs> uh, so wait, uh, wait. <laughs> 64 controller that's not pressure sensitive it's either on or off so that's that's the argument there's a big argument online of does half an a press exist no (laughs) no the way the thing is you can ask anybody it's either on or off i don't know after watching this guy's video i'm like half an a press i i can press though i can pull up the science that (laughs) proves that it's on or off half an a the button's held down he presses it once held down it's loaded because i think what happens with that is uh, in fighting games, there's a thing called negative edging, yeah. uh, where when you press a punch button and you mm-hmm. hold it down, you do a punch. But if mm-hmm. you keep holding it down and you do like a Hadouken motion, mm-hmm. like a half mm-hmm. quarter circle, mm-hmm. and then let go of that mm-hmm. button, it sh- also shoots a Hadouken. Mm-hmm. So in one button press, you've effectively pressed the punch button twice. Okay, but in Mario, does that work? <laughs> no. I think so. No. I'm not sure. What happens when you, when you depress that button? I think maybe you jump again. We gotta go test it. No, Where's the N64? you know. Where's an N64? You know that's not how it Let's happens. Let's go test it. Out. As someone who grew up with 64, you know that's not what happens when you let go of the A button. I'm not paying attention to the A button that <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. closely, man. I gotta go look. Yeah. But this video is crazy because like uh, the way the game works, like to track Mario's positioning, mm-hmm. the further you get off map, uh, the game creates within memory parallel maps like parallel universe maps okay so that if you travel a certain distance at a certain speed that would take you off map it would put you at the position where you would be on the parallel world map Mm -hmm. uh it's it's really confusing even to just talk about sounds like it but it deals with parallel worlds within side within mario 64 this is ridiculous it's crazy this is ridiculous (laughs) all to beat a level with half an a press wow with an a press (laughs) With an A press. Half an A press. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's only a 30 minute explanation, man. <laughs> Jeez. That's how you know. People are this guy's this guy's really pushing it with this half A press bullshit. It's really cool. It's a really cool video. Oh, I bet. I bet. But he did a full A press. There's like a way that you can like store uh Mario assets within within Mario. Mm. Uh, you know because like, when you grab something you hold it yeah. but you can like it's almost like you store it in your hat yeah. because you do a glitch where it puts your hat in your hand yeah. but then when you go to grab something it doesn't show you as grabbing it but you're still the game still counts you as holding it yeah so you're just walking around with nothing and then you can bring it somewhere else and throw it in the air yeah. and it freezes in the air mm-hmm. and so to beat one of the bomb like you know the one uh the first level in super mario 64 with the floating island yep he captures a bunch of goombas and then places them in spaces so that he B dives and then bounces off each Goomba to get to the floating island. Oh, I see what you're saying. It, and he doesn't press any button. Wow. So it's kind of nuts. Wow. But he can still press the other buttons. He can press B all he wants. <laughs> okay. B and Z. All right. He can press B and Z all, all, right. he, all he feels like. 
All right. But it's it's specifically the jump that is. All right. That is the challenge. Sure. All right. It's cool. All right. I liked it. Cool. <laughs> I mean, whatever. whatever That's your man. thing. That's whatever, your thing. Man. Neat. Uh, those are our picks. Yep. Sweet. Let's move on to our weeks. Mine is going to be pretty, pretty simple. So uh, last week I talked about free. Yeah. You finish it? I finished free. Dang. Dang, right? Did you read the fanfic? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, man. I can't remember the last time I turned so hard on an anime as I was watching it. Wait, you just don't like it anymore? Oh, man. No, I did not. What happened? Did someone grow robot arms? Uh, I don't know. But, like, all the characters just... Oh, it was just a bit too co- cookie cutter for me. Okay. But it was weird because they're all dudes, right? Yeah. But they all clearly have... It feels like the show was clearly designed first as a show with the girls. Like, all the characters are girl archetypes. Okay. But, I mean, they even act like like girl archetypes. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. And it's it was just... It just got really... Does it feel like boring. an original story? What The original story was made for girl a girl cast but then they're just like ah boys whatever it could have gone either way okay it could have gone either way uh like the whole point is not the sport itself it's about i guess it's it's actually closer to a coming of age story like okay these kids are leaving high school and like what do they want to do after high school do they want to take up competitive swimming mm-hmm. like to go to the olympics or do they not want to do that mm-hmm. and the lead character is like he's the Persona 3 main character archetype, where he never oh, says anything, chilling. but he's just so cool. Yeah, he's just, he's just so cool he, all the time. But he's cool because he doesn't say anything. Right, but he's <laughs> so indecisive and he doesn't know anything. Like, yeah. And he has all these emotions. That, like, okay, the entire cast, they have so many emotions. <laughs> Wait, are you telling me that human beings have emotions? No, but it's like all these bottled up emotions that they just can't tell their friends. And I just feel like, I get it when it's like, girls? That's... That is kind of sexist, <laughs> but I, I think growing up as a guy, I don't know if I've ever met any dudes who are like, they had so many emotions that they couldn't just tell their guy friends. I've met one. Okay. I think we know who I'm talking about. Yes, but like, is there what? <laughs> but have you met a cast of five? Like no. the entire group is no, like I have that? Not. Like most guys are just like, when something's on their mind, something's bothered them, they'll just say it. And this is also this is also straight guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Although there are parts where you're like, they could go either way. No, I'm saying for the people we're referencing. Oh yes, yes, like, yes. The, what we're referencing yeah. of these people who just can't say what they're yeah. saying, the, what they're feeling, yeah. are straight guys. Yeah. Oh, it's, it just gets so, like I love the Sundare archetype, but I yeah. love it when she, she, when that archetype is like this one person in a group with different types. <laughs> but when they're all like that, the show just gets so infuriating to watch, and you're like. Okay, no, I totally understand that. I, there was some anime I watched where everything could have been solved if someone just said something. Yeah. Like, the whole series would have been over. And yeah. I'm just like, well, I'm done with this. This yeah. is not... I'm just I was stupid. just like, come on. Just, like, if you want him to swim, just tell him to swim! <laughs> well, I don't know. Go swim, you idiot! Bang! Yeah, Stop sitting in your bathtub! It's it's not worth watching. Go watch uh, something else. Should I, should you watch episode one to see like the elaborate shirt you animations? You should. You should just watch episode one to see how they take off their shirts. Okay. And then you've been, you've pretty much seen the series. All right, that's fine. All right. Uh, so that's that. And then uh, I got sick of reading subtitles on anime. So you. So I turned on Netflix and watched Brooklyn Nine Nine. So you finally hopped on board the Brooklyn Nine Nine train. Yeah, like I watched like the first two episodes two weeks apart. Okay. Uh, a month ago and then um yesterday i was just tired i'm like i'll just put this on because <laughs> sitcoms are my favorite thing to watch when i'm tired yeah you don't have to read you don't have to pay up. you don't have to pay super attention and you can eat yeah and uh finish season one dang it was like one sitting it was just like wow that was 20 20 episodes sick jesus yeah i meant to go to sleep but i just you know oh, netflix is dangerous man yes it is it's totally super dangerous I so how, how long are these episodes? Like 22 minutes? 20, 21, 21 and a half. 21 and a half? Let's do uh, 21.5. Yeah, okay. Times 20 episodes? 20 episodes. What's that looking you like? You watch 430 minutes. So divide that by 60? 7 and 7 hour, 7.17 7 hours. That's about right, yeah. Yeah, that's Damn. about right. Because uh, it was Saturday night, 
And I knew I had to watch Formula One in, in at like two in the I morning. Had to. You had I to. had to. You couldn't wait for the re-release. You couldn't wait for the taped version. You no, had to. No, watch it. I have to watch it live. Um, and that's at two in the morning. It was like seven at night. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll put on some Brooklyn Nine Nine. I'll take a nap and I'll wake up. Mm-hmm. I didn't take a nap. <laughs> I just watched it. Oh my god. Uh, I really like that show. It's super funny. It's a good cast. Like the cast really works well together. That's what I'll say. Mm-hmm. Um. Really good um, uh, mix of different types of comedy they throw in. Like, a lot of it's visual, a lot of it's just really good writing, a lot of it is, uh, it's just a good balance. Like, they don't rely on the same sort of jokes or the style of jokes all Mm -hmm. the time. But uh, it's fun. My one complaint is, and this is going to sound so weird, but it's set design. Okay. Like, so they take place, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a story of NYPD, like a precinct. Yeah. Right, and it's a it's a bunch of detectives, and they they do cases and whatnot, and it's basically just following their lives. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I think it's because like of all those dramedies that have sort of like a, de- a gimmick detective show, like uh, what is it, Law and Order, mm-hmm. Bones, Castle. They all have really cool looking precincts. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn Nine Nine just looks so. It's like the most regular precinct. Yeah, it's so drab, and it's just like <laughs> I don't really like being in here and so the show i always find the show best when they have to go outside oh, okay. but because more than half the show is inside the building it's like this is like so boring <laughs> like i don't i don't like the way it all looks it's so eh. so i wish i wish it looked better but it doesn't um, that's unfortunate yeah but no the characters are all super colorful and fun it's filmed like the style of the office so if you know what that camera work is like, yeah, it's like that. But is the show like The Office? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay, because no. I don't, I can't watch The Office. No, it's not. It's not like just flat out dumb like yeah, that. It's... Like there's a character that feels like she could have been from The Office. Okay. Uh, but then again, she's also not a cop, so yeah. she's actually just office admin. So that makes sense. The Office is just it's strictly too awkward for me yeah like, no it's not like that it's at all. so awkward no, that it makes no. me awkward for watching and like it makes me feel awkward and i was like yeah. and then i don't want to watch the show anymore yeah yeah um it reminds me of like a more grown-up version like the the type the chemistry that the cast has together is like a more grown-up version of community okay where they're just a bit more adult and they uh things aren't so like crazy from one aspect to the other mm-hmm. they're all kind of like we're all cops all right and we got our shit to deal with, but mm. yeah, Terry Crews is funny. Andy Samberg is the best. <laughs> um, there's there's two Latina chicks. I don't know their names. Okay, but uh, they're funny. And I always forget the one guy, but the best character is their um, their captain. It's Terry Crews. No, 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 no. Terry Crews is like the second. Oh, okay. But their captain is like this big, large black dude. Okay. But he has zero emotions <laughs> zero <laughs> and he's also oh, pretty good he's also like a hard ass but he's also gay oh okay yeah <laughs> and so it's a weird character yeah and he talks about his husband named kevin do you ever see kevin oh you do see kevin okay. and he is like the classiest white dude you've ever met <laughs> he's a professor at some like <laughs> university he wears he wears corduroy jackets <laughs> yes he does he does <laughs> But yeah, his character is hilarious because like, uh, so I think like one running joke is no one can ever read him or how he's feeling. Yeah. And and so they just use that a lot. And then Kevin rolls in and knows exactly what's up. Uh, oh no, Kevin hates cops. Oh, okay. So yeah. But, Why what? Yeah, so that, so yeah. But it's a, it's a good show. I totally recommend it. I think season three comes out April the 20th. Okay. Uh, I'm just starting season two, so I should be able to get to season three in about... April the twentieth in seven hours. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be get. I'll get there, but I don't know. It's uh, it's good. It's this, good stuff. This uh, like I really want. Like this makes me really want to watch this show. Uh-huh. But it also makes me realize that uh, I re- I remember really loving Bob's Burgers. A lot of people love Bob's the Burgers. animated show. And I the last season I watched was season three. I didn't realize they're on like season six now. I was Ooh, like, oh man, I got wow. like three seasons to catch up on. Jeez, that's a lot. That's a great show. Well, it's animated, right? Yeah. 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 I don't think I could do animated shows. <laughs> What? You can't, like, do The Simpsons? No. What? Okay, yeah, if you can't do The Simpsons. I can't do The Simpsons. I hate Family Guy. Family Guy's not that funny. Uh, Like, the first three seasons of Family Guy were funny, uh, and then they brought it back, and Seth MacFarlane was the main driving force behind it. Yeah. And then it's just strictly Seth MacFarlane-style humor, and I'm like, I can't handle that. I can't handle that. I can't, uh, like, like, uh, Archer doesn't click with me. 
Oh, I like Archer. I like Archer a lot. Um, Archer's starting to to wear on me though. Is it? Yeah. Um, is it Lucha Underground? I haven't seen that. Oh, okay. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, I can't do a Amer- like adult animated series. I I, I tried can't. to do Rick and Morty. Oh, I couldn't do I that. I couldn't do Rick oh, and Morty. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I don't know why. Like when I want my adult comedy, it has to be live. Okay. Live action stuff. It's weird. But yeah, no. The uh, you know what it is? What I watch too much anime. True. That's what I expect when I see something animated. I just need puns and gags. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mana beans. Okay. <laughs> so what was your week like? Oh, uh, yo, my week is super simple. I played more Enter the Gungeon. Oh yeah, you played that. Uh... That game's still good. Yeah. Uh, I've made it to a new record of the third floor. Uh, and I've also I've also found a secret floor uh, yeah. that's repeatable mm-hmm. that you get the access from the first dungeon. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of yo, there's a lot of references in that game. Yeah, like a ton of references. Uh, I heard. I got the Earthworm Jim gun. Wow, Earthworm Jim. Wow, like you know the red pistol. Yeah, I know yeah. What you're talking about. Uh, I got I got a Ghostbusters gun. It just sh- shoots streams, Shit. and you can cross the streams in multiplayer if you both have the gun. Wow. Uh. So many references, cool in that game. It's, uh, it's references that are that still hold because they're not, uh, they're not like su- they're kind of overt. Like you know what you like when you see it, you know what it is. Uh, but it's not in your face about it, mm. right? It's not just like every time you shoot the Earthworm Jim gun, it, gun, it doesn't like do a quote from Earthworm Jim or something. Oh, okay. like, right? It's not like in your face annoying. Uh, but that every time I play that game, I'm getting a little better and. Uh, I'm buying more upgrades. Uh, the one thing I unlocked is a like a permanent shop. Yeah. So in the second floor, you can save like a robot and this girl, yeah. and she opens up a shop in the uh, in the overworld, pretty much. Yeah. And every time you get uh, every time you beat a boss, mm. they drop hedge money credits, mm. and you use that hedge money credits to buy unlocks that have a chance of appearing in the dungeon. Mm. So you like you can buy new upgrades, new weapons that are better than the current arsenal you have available Mm -hmm. so and then you have the chance of picking those up within the dungeon Mm -hmm. to make your life easier yeah uh and then also i found a dude who said he can uh help me go down more floors at once yeah Uh, so instead of taking a bullet down one floor you can go two floors i guess or maybe even start on a lower floor yeah Uh, i don't know what to do there uh but i did learn that when you go down a level from the bullet uh, i think this is floor two and on uh, the bullet leaves after you enter the level, but if you drop into the hole, yeah, uh, of the of where the bullet entered, mm-hmm. there's like an elevator mine shaft type thing, uh, with like it seems like access to another place and like a com- broken computer, but I don't know what to do with it. So there's some more mysteries in this game that hmm. that I haven't oh, I haven't bothered looking up spoilers because I don't want to be spoiled. But of course not. I'm actually surprised you're not playing Dark Souls. Yeah, I haven't got I Dark Souls. Listen. Next week are exams. Like uh, I, th- I, I think next weekend my week is gonna be super dry because uh-huh. I'll just be doing exams all week. Yeah, uh, and then probably after, after I beat Bravely Second, I'll get Dark Souls. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I played the Bravely Second demo. Did I'm you? not gonna spoil much. Okay. Uh, yo, Bravely Second still awesome. Uh, the new classes add a lot to that game. <laughs> yeah. uh, even though the battle system is still pretty much the same. Yeah, like braving and defaulting mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, so I beat that demo. We got the special editions. For... We certainly did. Those things are huge. They were. Those things are massive. I went to the store to pick it up, um, uh, like on my bike. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, I'm on my bike. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I went to go pick it up and the dude brought it out of the back and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, because that day I had to go to my dad's house to help him with uh, some backyard gardening stuff. Yeah. Right? And I just I just biked his place. And I was like, okay, I'll... I'll Drop by the store on my way home. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, and so when I was driving, when I was biking home, like I had to hold in one hand. I'm like, oh man. The pa- you haven't opened it, but the packaging inside is really nice. Oh, is it? There's, it's like a 300 page full size art book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard there's some censorship with that art book. Is there? On the American one, yeah. Because oh. the, there's like one page or two pages, I think, in the Japanese one. Um, what's her face? Agnes? Yeah. Uh, where she's kind of like half naked Mm -hmm. and she's bleeding. Like she's cut, like slit wrists and stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. It's like all concept art. And there's like four pictures of her in different poses where she's 
uh, like tattered, not like tattered clothing. It looks like she's wearing like just bed sheets oh, okay. with like blood got on her wrists. Okay. They cut that out. Oh. And they replaced it with something else. Why? I don't know. Licensing or localization. I don't know what it is. Like, cause it's an art book, like an art book in a super limited collector's edition mm. that only a handful of people are going to have. And like the people who would have that book yeah. would kind of want. Yeah. Whatever art's in there. Yeah, you you can look it up. There's like, it, I don't know. It's weird. Like, because I I understood the localization change in the first game with the costumes with the DLC. Oh costumes. yeah, of course, of course. Like it's like okay, these are like sixteen year old girls and they're in bikini. Like this is yeah. Kind of one of them just looks like she's a dominatrix. Yeah, this yeah. is just like a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, and like I totally understood that, but like this doesn't sound yeah too bad. Yeah. And also this game like so even with uh so I played a little bit of Bravely Second. Yeah. Uh, but this game seems a lot edgier. Is it, does it? Within the first oh, one. Oh, it's good. Like, it's kind of going in some dark places. Yeah. Uh, and I really like it. It's oh, just, it's like... Good. Because, like, the ga- the first game, I guess, slight spoilers for Bravely... Oh, no! Oh, no! 2014's Game of the Year? Yeah. Uh, that, like, that game got really dark towards the end. Because it did that whole switcheroo. Oh, it did. Right? That's right. I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, hey, man, check it out. You thought this was like a Four Heroes of Light story? No, you're all idiots. Yeah. Like, check out this, like, the darkest shit. And, like... This... Yeah, it went real. It just turned. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, that, the final boss fight, like, yeah. even, like, just like, hey, remember, because you're in parallel worlds, remember your friend yeah. over here? Fuck him. And then he just, yeah. like, crushes your friend's world. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then you can see your face. My... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shit. So, like, because it, it mixes in, like, the dark stuff with this weird, like, fourth wall breaky shit. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't, like, I can't imagine, like, any other game ha- that has done that. Um, and But this game kind of starts off where the last one ended off, obviously, because it's a sequel. Yeah. Uh, but they also start, like, that in terms of tone. Okay, cool, and cool. it doesn't seem like, it seems like this is a much darker game. Mm. Like if this were a trilogy, this is the dark, the darkest middle chapter. I hope it's not a trilogy. I'd I be ho- totally fine. Honestly, I'd be totally fine with this being the last game. Of no, I mean people. like I hope this is literally Final Fantasy. We get Bravely Third, Bravely Fourth. fourth. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> like, and we just keep going. <laughs> These Bravely games are really popular. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, that'd be awesome because then it it wouldn't use Roman numerals, right? It'd yeah. be the word. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. It would be like this is the new Final Fantasy. Yeah, bravely. Fun. And then we get to seven, and like it changes shit, shit up. up. Yeah. Tetsuya Nomura's son is doing character design. Yeah, and then we get all fucking like old hipster bullshit. Be like, remember Bravely Default? Yeah, yo, Bravely Second was the best one because <laughs> of this class. Yeah. Uh, but like other game, like classic improvements yeah. uh, still hold up, like being able to change your encounter rate. Oh, that was the best! So good. It ma- uh, they added a new thing in the demo, uh, which makes grinding even uh, not. I wouldn't say. Oh, are easier, you are you going to talk about the like the bonus, like the one more one battle? more time? Yeah. If you beat an if you beat a group of enemies in one turn on yeah. the first turn, you can just go into another battle immediately. Yeah, and if. And you get a bonus on your rewards. Yeah. And the more you go, uh, the better it is. And, like, because you can, like, stock turns yeah. and stuff like that, like, you can kind of go places if you strategize that yeah. correctly. Yeah. Uh, I do remember in the first game there was one skill on the summoner where if you were 20 levels above the enemy you were facing, it just instantly kills them. Yeah. So I wonder if that's back. And then you can just one more time, one more time, one more time, one yeah. more time. That'd be cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, they made grinding fun. Yeah. The, again, like... I want I I wanted to retweet your tweets so hard mm-hmm. of just like hey everyone stop complaining that Square doesn't know how to make mm-hmm. JRPGs cuz they do yeah. and no one plays it. Yeah. <laughs> it's bravely default and it's yeah. bravely second and yeah. you guys don't give a shit. Yeah. It's just like when I when I cuz I hear like a lot of people like they look at the final 15 like the recent stuff they announced, yeah. right? Um and they're like, "Man, I'm so sad that Final Fantasy isn't turn-based." And it's like, "Well, Play the other game. Play they the made. other one that they made specifically <laughs> for you. Yeah, it's like it's here. Like it. It's it's not on my TV, man. Yeah, I don't know. And like a lot of people love to harken back to like Super Nintendo era JRPGs. Yeah. And I'm like, this is it. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing this is it. it. It's yeah. a thing. Go yeah. pick it up. 
But it doesn't say Final Fantasy on the box. True. So. Well, whatever, man. When we're old and all our kids are playing Bravely Default 7. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, what's this Final Fantasy? I've never heard of this. Yeah. The last game was 15? What yeah. happened? <laughs> then then we'll be then they'll be eating crow, I yeah. guess. But yeah, so you did that. I did that. Uh, and then the last thing I did, uh, I watched uh, Neighbors. Oh, finally. Yeah. So I saw a while ago the trailer for Neighbors 2. Yeah. Uh, like the sorority version. Uh-huh. And I was like, that looks really funny. Yeah. Uh, and then you you were like, have you not seen Neighbors? Yeah. I was like, no. And she's like, you're like, what? How have you not seen Neighbors? <laughs> it was great. So I watched that movie. That movie's great. That yeah. movie's hilarious. Isn't it? Uh, I like that movie. Uh, they have they have some raunchy comedy in it. Yeah. But it's not... They always bring it up in a way where you would never expect it to be raunchy. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, what? No way. Like, oh, oh, yeah. It oh. Like, surprises you, and it's only for like a split second. Are you talking about the breastfeeding? That okay, that there's the breastfeeding part. <laughs> yeah. There's the one where uh what's his name? What's the Seth Rogan's friend? Oh right, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. His his divorced wife yeah. was like, Hey look, it's a necklace. And yeah. it was it was <laughs> McLuffin's yeah. like dick. Yeah. <laughs> he's a huge yeah. dick in that movie. Yeah. Uh yeah, like there's there's a, a couple parts where it's like really raunchy, but it's only for a little bit. And it catches you off guard to where you're like, oh, that's still funny, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that was like the reason I didn't like like American Pie mm-hmm. and stuff like that because it's just all raunch all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, whatever, I'm done. But this movie's really good. The airbag scenes are just as funny as they are in the trailers. Yep. Uh, Zac Efron is Zac Efron and Dave Franco are really they're the good. Best. They're so good in this. <laughs> yeah, they're the best. Uh, yeah, just overall, that's a great movie. <laughs> Zac Efron doesn't own his shirt in that movie. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> no, he okay. He does. He wears the dress shirt at the beginning with the tie. Oh yeah, to yeah. say hello. But then in the <laughs> next scene, he unbuttons it and has it unbuttoned the whole time. Yeah, so we're gonna Agar- Abercrombie and Finch at the end. Yeah, yeah. He's just outside. Yeah, yeah. that movie's shirtless. Oh, that movie's really good. The one th- okay, I've also watching this movie. I've realized uh, the one thing I really don't like in comedies, mm. which is when uh, they joke around with infidelity. Mm. like just like hey like the wife cheated on someone right yeah and they play around with that concept a little bit really subtly in that movie where like zach efron eyes the wife oh yeah yeah. and yeah. i'm like fuck is that gonna happen yeah and it doesn't yeah uh but i've realized like yo that's totally my like tumblr i'm triggered thing <laughs> yeah because like i think back there was a uh, horrible bosses too yes right i don't think that movie overall was as funny as horrible bosses one yeah but i hate it because of the end of what uh the ninfo character the girl from friends uh jennifer aniston jennifer aniston's character does at the end of that movie mm. uh where she like has sex with a dude in a coma mm-hmm. thus committing yeah infidel- and, like i hate that movie because of that mm. and, it, and i'm like i'm like oh man no i'm, tri- I'm triggered <laughs> what happened uh but like i'm not i'm not like uh i'm not saying those movies shouldn't be made or anything or, it's just like, your personal yeah it's just my personal preference and yeah. like i'm not saying oh they should have warned me beforehand it's like no no they don't have to do that at all like it's just but i, f- I found my triggered thing wow <laughs> wow and i was so happy when it didn't happen the movie ended and it was all good and i was yeah. like yes yep yeah. oh that movie's really good and i, I want to see neighbors too really bad yeah the girl one yeah, yeah listen to the sorority. To... yeah stop spraying them you're <laughs> making them look hotter <laughs> oh no oh, there was Crap. one there was one minor scene in Neighbors that really made me laugh. Let's just like laugh out loud. What was uh, it? Where there it was after the sorority moves in, and they were the the husband wife couple were trying to have sex on the couch, and then there's like a party outside, and they yeah. notice them having sex on the couch, and then the next scene is just a crowd of people making <laughs> sex noises at their window. <laughs> that was really funny. But then that movie gets super deep with like friendships between oh, guys. Yeah. yeah. With like Dave Franco when she tries to like put pose, yeah. pose before bros. Yeah. Uh the part at the end where it's just like you're you're just you're only picking on them because you're afraid of what's gonna happen after the sorority. Like you don't yeah. know what, what you want to do and stuff. And yeah, that movie goes places. I really like it. Yeah, it gets serious for yeah. a moment. You're like, what am I watching? What's going on? But it's good. It's yeah. a great movie. It's good. Definitely recommend it. And yeah, that's been my that's been my week, man. That's the new stuff. Sick. That's the end of the episode. Uh, thanks for listening. This is be sure to continue listening. Yeah. On our anime club podcast. 
yeah, if you join us there, let us know. Uh, just to refresh you, we are watching My Hero Academia. Episode 2. And Keys and Ivor. Episode 2. Episode 2. Well, actually, we're doing episodes 1 and 2, kind of like just jammed. Oh, we're just going to jam them? Okay. Yeah. Jam them Because it'd be silly if we put up a new podcast and be like, oh, we're starting episode 2. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to, like, oh, yeah, true. If you want to, like, if you want to listen to the first episode thoughts, like, go to this podcast. Go to this podcast and scroll to XXX <laughs> yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, true. We'll, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll do it. All right. 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anyways, if you don't listen to our anime podcast, well, shame on you. That's fine. I guess you. No, you can shame just... on you. Fine, shame on you. I knew it. I knew you. <laughs> Why would you guilt them like that? Why would you do that? I was trying to be good cop. We're bad cop. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will talk to you next week with hopefully this time bravely second. Yeah, actual deets on, on the bravely second deets and tweets. Anyways. See ya. Peace out.